Here you are at the White Swan Ballroom in Wrightsville, Pennsylvania. We met each other at an a audition. Mm -hmm. um, I had went down for an audition to sing in this girls group. Uh, the guy wanted to form a girls group. And I went down for the audition, and um, which my mother forced me to go down for this audition. That was not my thoughts about being a singer at all. I was going to be an airline stewardess. I'm going to fly the friendly skies. But uh, ended up going for an audition, and I was one of the girls that was chosen to make it short. One of the girls that was chosen for the audition. Roz and I were both 14 years old, so when we met, we were 14 years old, you know. But she remembers differently, but I remember going to the Y with my girlfriend. That's how I got down there. You know, she heard that this audition was going to be at the YMCA, you know. And he was auditioning all these young ladies that was running around. He had this little beat-up piano, and he'd <laughs> hit a note, and he'd tell them to hit an ah, and he'd do that two or three times, you know. and. Um, and then he tell him, okay, go sit down, you know, and I'm sitting there just waiting for my girlfriend. And uh, he looks at me and he said, hey, you, come here and sing me a ah, you know, and I'm like, who, me? I, I didn't come to audition. I came with my friend, you know. He said, that's all right. Come on up to the piano anyway, you know, and I'm like, oh. so I went up there and he plunked out a little something on the piano he said sing a ah and I went ah and then he did another one he said sing another ah and I went ah and then he said did another one and I said ah he said okay go back and sit down and I was like whoo <laughs> you know so when he finished with all the young ladies that was running around he finally announced he said I have my group he says I have the, the group you know and so he picked he picked the young lady that I went down there with. He picked Roslyn. Mm -hmm. He picked another young lady, and then he pointed to me and he said, you. And once the group was formed, though, we started rehearsing at the gentleman that she had mentioned before. We started rehearsing at his house, and we rehearsed at her house, and we rehearsed at my house, and the other girl's house. We would re rehearse like in the living room, you know, move the cocktail tables out of the way, and we <laughs> did rehearsing. And stuff. But eventually, one of them left, and at some point, our lead singer knew Martha Reeves, mm -hmm. and she, I think Martha was singing with another group or something, and she asked Martha into the group, right. and Martha joined the group. She said, I, I sing with a group, I'm missing a member, do you want to come and sing with the group? And so she did, you know, she joined the group. But I think Martha still wanted to be a solo singer, and um, after we had been singing for a while, she had an opportunity to go and meet with someone that was doing auditions for Motown. And to make this short, she eventually ended up being the first A&R secretary at Motown because she went for an audition on the wrong day. <laughs> and the gentleman that she went to audition with, he was taking phone calls and trying to check with the band and try to do this and do that, and he had to leave the room. Martha was in his office and he said, okay, just sit here for a minute, I, I gotta go out of the room and do something. He said, just take phone calls, just write down notes and stuff like that, and she did. So she ended up becoming the first A&R secretary for Motown because Motown was still up and coming. Well, we didn't actually go down to audition. We didn't. We were singing with Martha and she called us in to do some background work with her. And uh, we actually started out doing background work and the first person that we did background for was Marvin Gaye. Okay. Yeah. So from that, uh, even we went on the road, I think, the at first one Motown time review with, Marvin with Marvin just to do background. His background. And we were the first ladies singers. to sing background behind Marvin Gaye. Our actual story is <laughs> that Barry told us, okay, I don't want to, we were Delphi's, but he didn't want to have to go through all the red tape about, you know, copywriting the name and this and that and all that. So he says, uh, you girls, ladies need to change your name. So he said, I'll give you half an hour to come up with a name, and if you don't come up with anything, whatever I call you, that's what you're going to be. So we, there was myself, Annette, a girl named Gloria Jean, and Martha. 
we were all in one little room and we never came up with a name. So we got this phone call and Barry said, have you come up with a name yet? We says, no, not yet, we're still trying. And he says, that's all right, you're gonna be the Van Dallas. Well, the Funk Brothers was just a group of guys that they had, did they, I don't know if they actually put them together or they, they just sort of got came themselves together. together because when we started recording, recording, the Funk Brothers were already together. And one of the things that make Motown so unique is Barry allowed these guys, he would tell them what he wanted on the music when he was putting them behind somebody, but they had a tendency to put their, he let them do their own thing as far as the instrument that they play. Yeah. So that's where the unique sound comes from, you know. It was just so different. Whoever wrote it, they would say, this is good for the Vandellas, and we're gonna get this to the Vandellas. They would call us in, and they would tell us, they would play it out, and one of the guys would sing it, how he wanted it or something, and he said, you know, this is the kind of background I want to it, and it, it kind of worked from that point. Preparations was done upstairs. There was an upstairs, and they, they bring you in this one little room, and gee, I, I'm singing. Yeah. And um, we had, um, like, with Holland Dozer Holland, Eddie and Lamont were sort of like work with backgrounds. They got us together and showed us how they wanted us to sing the backgrounds and gave us the notes and things like that. And I think, uh, what's the name, worked more so with Martha, because we never really worked together, because we'd be in one room learning the background and she'd be in another room somewhere learning the lead. So that's how they, each one of them had a different assignment, you know, and uh, I think all, the, all of them wrote the songs, but once they wrote them, then they just decided who they thought was best suited for the song. What was your niche? We think our sound was, we think the Supreme sound was a little more prettier than our sound. We were, I think we were considered the more rougher sounding group. And I think that was because the lead singer that we had when we were the Delphi's, like I said, she made us sing everything. So we were used to singing all kinds of genres of music, you know, but if it was kind of soft and sweet, then they sort of gave that to the Supremes. If it was a little bit rougher, then they would kind of give it to the Vandellas. <laughs> have always said that the songs that they got they really didn't like <laughs> and uh, they would always say we don't like this song we want something like the Vandellas song. got yeah, you know Vandella something like the Marvelous because you know their songs is, is, is popping so they were really happy when they finally got that number hit hit number one record that, mm -hmm. that they recorded then they were glad to have that song three different levels like our music is a little little not raunchy but you know it's it's more the Supremes are really soft and pretty the Marvelettes would be like leave in between and then the Vandellas so it's, it's like three different levels I think that's, that's, why, that's, that's the way
surprised today, here we are, 2016, that there's still an intense interest in Motown, the Vandellas. The, the group had broken up, but eventually we got back with Martha and we sung with her for another couple of years. I don't know. Like about 10. How about 10 years? Yeah, about 10 years. We then with it. after that, it happened again. The group, it, it was that Martha no longer wanted to sing with the Vandellas. The Vandellas. She sort of more like wanted to do her own solo. thing. Yes. And then she decided that she was going to sing with her sister. She has two sisters. She wanted to sing with her sisters. So we kind of accepted it. We had no, you know, we couldn't do anything about it. But within the next year, Someone just approached us and said, you girls are the Vandellas, you know, why aren't you singing? And, you know, I said, well, they said, no, we're not accepting that. Why don't you girls get you somebody to sing with you and you girls go out there and sing? So we thought about it, but we were sort of like being loyal and said, well, no, maybe we won't want to do that. But then after they talked to us and they kept pressuring us. Get the head Actually, it was peer so. pressure. It was <laughs> like the contours yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. they kept bugging us out, you know. So like we, we decided to goodness, <laughs> we decided to run an audition and interview some some lead singers. And uh, from that, we got a new lead singer and. We started, we started singing again. We started going out as the original Vandellas. Yes. And what we're excited about is that people still accept us as the original Vandellas, yeah. even though we don't have Martha with us. Yeah. We just appreciate the people, the acceptance that we get right. being Vandellas. Because Annette does not sing lead. I don't sing lead. We're not lead singers. We're background singers. We like to harmonize. We like being in the background. So we were kind of worried as to how the people would accept us, even though we were the original girls. But it's been fantastic because, like she said, this new lead singer we have, she's a mom. She's wonderful. My favorite is Jimmy Mac. It's on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like Jimmy Mac too. Yeah, Jimmy Mac is. His name is Jimmy.
really, really like and appreciate about him is he was he always had the open door. So if there was a problem, which I really didn't have no problems really, the door was always open where you could always go in and talk to him if you needed to, you know. But he was always there, um, and he he never treated one group better than the, I'm different than the other. I mean, he was like friendly with everybody and he was an easygoing guy. I don't know how he was with his business associates I'm talking about as far as the entertainers. You know, I think he appreciated us for who and what we were to him and how we helped his company to rise. Well, my story was, I was, we were really excited when Barry took us personally to New York. We worked, uh, well, we, I think we were at the, the Apollo, and he personally accompanied us to New York. And the main thing I love about Barry is because I've always adopted him as my big brother. He's let me be his little sister, so. Time for an encore, a song that you, the number one signature song of the Vandellas, what would you speak? Pick. Which one? Which well, I know the signature song for the Vandellas is Dancing in the Street. If you would come uh, for the anthem of Motown, a song done by the Vandellas.